Environmental Protection Agency Monday proposed cutting U.S. carbon emissions 30 percent by 2030. The action is part of President Barack Obama's Climate Action Plan. The United States is the second largest emitter of CO2 for energy use in the world behind only China. Within the U.S., from 2005 to 2011, the state with the biggest growth in emissions was Nebraska. This state increased its energy-related emissions by 20 percent. The Energy Information Administration says the expansion of biofuels, increased production of crude oil, and the temporary closure of the Fort Calhoun nuclear power plant played roles in Nebraska's increase. Earlier this week, UNL Extension Water and Ag Law Specialist Dave Aiken joined us to discuss the EPA's proposed cuts. 30 percent average uh, for all the states. Uh, Nebraska's uh, figure is 26 percent, and that would be from a 2005 baseline uh, by 2030. So that, you know, it's, it's less than the average, but it would still be a heavy lift, so we've got a ways to go. How would Nebraska and the other states that really need to regulate go about doing so? Uh, there are two main strategies that have been successful so far. That has been uh, reducing demand by improving energy efficiency and then getting more electricity from wind, solar, and other renewables, as well as from natural gas. Sure. Let's look at the, the first two of those. So energy efficiency, things like what? That would be the consumer rebates for, for energy efficient appliances or windows, insulation, you know, lighting, all that kind of stuff. And this can also be extended to industrial customers to get into that sector as well. And the other side of that, renewable energy would play what role? Well, the more that we can generate from wind or solar or other renewable sources in Nebraska, the less we have to burn coal to produce. And so that's it's almost a one for one reduction. If states also need to regulate down farther or down further, could they cap and trade the rest off to states that are regulating better or more efficiently? Absolutely. Uh, e EPA is promoting a regional uh, approach in this in that they would like to have uh, states that are linked together already through their power distribution system get together and, and develop a regional approach which could include cap and trade which over the years has proved to be the cheapest way to deal with these types of issues. As you look at these proposals and you think about the power plants, is this a push from coal to natural gas, an obvious push from coal to natural gas? Well that, that change has already occurred. Uh, the fracking revolution has made elect, uh, natural gas a lot more inexpensive and a lot more available. And uh, now if uh, utilities look at building a new uh, fossil fuel plant, you know, nine times out of ten it's going to be natural gas and not coal. As you said before, and you've written in Cornusker Economics, other states have been efficient in regulating their own electricity or their own energy emissions, correct? That's right. Uh, the states in the Northeast as part of the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative and then the state of California, have, they've all experienced uh, carbon reductions of over 30 percent uh, from the energy efficiency and from the renewable side. So it's, you know, it's, it's definitely doable. You just have to make your mind up that you're going to do it as a state. And what's the relationship on regulation between industry and between agriculture? Well, industry and agriculture are both significant contributors to our total greenhouse gas emissions, but they are not going to be regulated under the Obama proposal. Uh, transportation and energy are the two biggest uh, greenhouse gas, gas emission, uh, emitters, and we've got the uh, 50 plus mile per gallon fuel efficiency requirements that will take place in the next 10 years, uh, and so that will be a big reduction there, and so they're trying to get another big reduction on the power plant side. What short-term impact could this have on agriculture? Well, the main thing that people need to remember is that um, EPA is, uh, their top concern is making sure that our electricity system is reliable. So when you flip the switch, the lights come on. Uh, nobody wants to do anything that will compromise that. Uh, otherwise, uh, if there's a shift from uh, from coal to natural gas, uh, you know, that could affect fertilizer prices, so we want to keep an eye on that. And if there's a lot more interest in wind, uh, we need to get ready in Nebraska so that, you know, when wind developers want to come to Nebraska, they're, they can do business. And longer term for, you know, agricultural organizations that feature a carbon component. That's right. Well, on the livestock side, uh, if you've got a confined livestock operation, you, you've got the possibility to do a uh, a waste to energy conversion uh, the, where you use your, your manure emissions to generate electricity and sell carbon credits for that and electricity and the whole bit. The other thing would be on, on the uh, uh, land side, uh, we have the carbon sequestration and uh, not too many years ago you could get, uh, they're selling uh, contracts for that on the Chicago Climate Exchange and so I'll bet within the next few years we see a comeback on that side. This is the proposal, where do we go from here? 
uh, EPA will come out with final regs a year from now, so uh, mid-2016 would be the first mm -hmm. uh, deadline for Nebraska in terms of telling EPA what we're going to do, but it looks like anybody that needs an extension could get one for a year without any questions asked.